Hi, this is Robin Heppel from FuneralFuturesWebsites.com, and today I'm going to share with you the most Google-friendly obits ever. Ever since my 30-minute Google obit case study, other funeral home owners have wondered why their online obits can't be found in Google and want to know what they can do to get them there. But before getting into the how, I should explain the why. Why is having your obit show up in Google so important? Simply said, if you can control the dissemination of funeral information in your market, would you want to? Or would you rather leave it up to the newspapers to do it? But beyond the obituary information control that is up for grabs is the ability to provide a higher level of service by aiding your client family to inform more people more quickly. If more people left more online condolences and more people attended the service, wouldn't that both help the family and expose more people to the positive effects of attending a funeral? As Dr. Earl Groman said, grief shared is grief diminished. Now I'm going to get into the benefits of Google-friendly obits. Did you know that friends and acquaintances of the deceased start Googling the deceased's name and service information as soon as they hear that that person has died? So whether you have the obit on your website or not, if Google doesn't know that you have it, Google can't direct these people to see it. Now there's also a side benefit to you as well. The more online obits Google knows that you have, the more authority it will presume your website has over competing websites with less pages, with the result being higher rankings in Google for funeral-related terms. To put it another way, your online obits can help drive your website up towards the top of the Google rankings, basically SEO, which is search engine optimization, on autopilot. Some companies pay hundreds, even thousands of dollars a month to stay on the first page of Google, but if done correctly, your online obits can do it for you for free. Now we're gonna talk about creating Google-friendly obits, and there are three key components. Number one, the content, which is the obituary itself. Number two, the obituary page properties. And number three, distribution and promotion. First, the content of the obituary. The obituary needs to be in text on your website, not a graphic. Even though the graphics may look fancier, it needs to be in text so that the search engines can read the words. Next, the name of the deceased must be in the first part of the page, not including your navigation. Throughout this video, you're going to be seeing HTML code displayed in bright red. The name should also have the heading one attribute applied to it. At this time, I'd highly recommend that you print off the Google-friendly obituary cheat sheet so that you can follow along because we're going to dive into the source code of the HTML. Here on this example, as you can see here, the title tag is surrounding the person's name and also the H1 tag is also encompassing the person's name. Formatting the obituary is also important. Since space and lineage is not an issue for online obituaries, format the obit by breaking it up into paragraphs. Add section headers if appropriate. And as an example, funeral information. This helps somewhat for SEO, but it also makes the obit easier to read. As we look at the HTML source code here, you can see that celebration of life is surrounded by the heading two tag not as important as a heading one tag, but next in order. And then also you can see that the paragraph tag is encompassing the main paragraphs of the obituary. Again, to break them up and give them some form so that they're easier to read for the visitor. Now we're going to talk about links and anchor text. Links in the obit for both pages within your site as well as external pages and the words used called anchor text to link to those pages will benefit those pages and help them rank higher. And my rule of thumb is three links per obituary, two internal and one external, but not having any more than five in total. Internal link examples could be directions to your chapel, and you always leave in the hyperlink for condolences may be offered at 
www.yourfuneralchapel.com because you never know if your obituary gets picked up on another site so that if that's not hyperlinked on your site, they can't be directed back to the obituary if this obit appears on another site. And then also you can include a footer for each of your obits with your firm name and city hyperlinked. The reason why we include the city is that the city is a very important keyword for you to rank for, such as funeral homes plus your city. By hyperlinking the city name as well, that will help you in the search engine rankings. Examples of external links could be a link to the employment website of the person who has died, preferably a page that mentions their name, link to community activity websites such as Rotary, fraternities, or sports teams. You can link to the charity's website and also link to the church's website that the service is being held at. Now, even though I've given you many examples here, you still want to keep between the rule of thumb of three to five links. And this is what it looks like behind the scenes. You can see in the first part that the St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church is actually the anchor text that will be directing people to the FuneralFutures.com About Hep webpage. And then at the bottom is an example of an internal link where it's directing people to your Funeral Chapel Family Center, directing people back to that website as well, even though it's on your website at this time. Another website could, what they call, scrape the obituary, place it on their site, and then that becomes a backlink back to your website. I know we're getting technical here, but this stuff is really important on how you can rank higher in the search engines. It is also important to make sure that the obituary picture is doing its best work for you as well. For the file name of the image, it's better to have the deceased name .jpg and not some word or string of letters that doesn't mean anything to the deceased. If you wish, you can also include a title tag for the image and an alt tag for the image, and the end result is this string of code and words. The first part is saying this is where the image can be found, and then it says this is the title of the image, and this is the alternative text for the image. Now we're going to focus more on some page properties of the obituary. First of all, the page title, and here are a couple of examples, leading with the first name, and then the word obituary, and then your town, and then your firm, or especially if you're covering a larger market, you can have the deceased name, and then the word of, and then the town that they're from, and then your firm name. This is going to help when someone searches for that town's name and funeral home because this obituary will actually help you rank higher for those terms, even though it's not specifically the town or city that you are located in. Please note that there is a 60 character maximum for the page title. And also you want to have your page URL with the deceased name in what we call the slug. So here you can see yourfuneralchapel.com forward slash deceased dash name instead of just a string of letters and characters. On this page you can see that the top box that's highlighted shows the page title and then the second box in the address bar is the URL or the page slug. And so if someone's searching for Jane Robinson obituary it that name is in the page title and also in the URL. And now we're going to talk about distribution and promotion. First of all, you want to link the deceased name as anchor text to the obituary page. What I mean here is instead of on a web page saying click here and having the click here highlighted, it should be click here for Jane Robinson's obituary and Jane Robinson's obituary should be the anchor text. You should also add the link to social media sites such as Twitter and Facebook or instruct the family on how to do that. And also make sure that your XML sitemap is updated with a new obituary page. This really helps the search engines find out when you have new obituaries on your website. 
And now some bad news. Depending on your current website, you may have trouble accomplishing these steps due to limitations from various website providers. On the other hand, besides just some formatting of the obituary, our clients don't have to think about all of these title tags and page tags because it's done automatically every time they upload an obituary notice. You see, some website developers have the obituary name in a graphic instead of text because they think that it looks pretty. And it may, but it's not helping people find that obituary information. Some of them have numbers and characters in the URL, again, hindering the opportunity for that obituary to be found in the search engines. There's no name in the page title at all, and some websites have the same page title for every page on the website, and that the image has an auto-generated file name with no alt or title tags. And also, there's some bad news if your obituary URLs look like some of the ones listed on this page. That means that your obituaries aren't listed on your domain name. They're listed on your web developer's domain name, meaning that their websites continue to look bigger in the eyes of Google, where your website or your domain name stays at the same size all the time. You should check with your website developer to see how they're counteracting this by either passing on some additional backlinks back to your website or some other form of search engine optimization. And I just want to share with you some other warning signs that your online obits aren't search engine friendly. Although it looks fancy, the obit pops up into a new window or opens up into a light box where the rest of the page is all blacked out. It looks cool, but it doesn't help you in the search engine rankings or for family or friends trying to find information about that person's obituary. Another warning sign is that the URL in the address bar never changes when obits are clicked on throughout your website. So what to do next? Well, if you haven't already done so, download the Google-friendly obit cheat sheet. You can see that here on the cheat sheet to the left, you can see that I've identified the various page tags and titles throughout the visible side, and also a peek behind the scenes in the HTML source code this may look like a lot of work, but it's completely automated for the Funeral Futurist website clients. They enjoy the fact of having their obituaries found in Google in as little as 10 minutes, but almost always within 30 minutes, just like the 30-minute Google obituary case study that I did two years ago. Now, even though you may not be able to do all of these with your current web host, you might be able to do some of them such as including links within the obituary itself and also putting a little footer note with your funeral home name and the city name and state or province with that being hyperlinked back to your website, maybe even to the directions page. If you'd rather have an automated solution and for more information about funeral home websites that rank high in Google, including your online obits, and that are easy to update and don't trap you in long contracts or proprietary systems, visit FuneralFuturistWebsites.com. This is Robin Heppel.